Hello friends, welcome to the Storyteller's Guide on Gilding Light, where we take adventure storytelling to the next level. Thanks to our sponsors, Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms and World Anvil. I'm Satine Phoenix, your story guide for today's Storyteller's Guide episode called Story Climax and Reward. Your story is epic. The players are invested. You've traveled and explored strange new lands and planes of existence. Now it's time for crescendo and reward. It's time to take all those threads you've introduced and put them into an ending. This seems to be the hardest part for many storytellers. No one wants their story to end. We weave and weave and weave, and sometimes your adventures stay and keep playing. And sometimes some fall off and life gets in the way, and the story never ends. Consider putting your story into a TV show format. Is it a mini series of three to four games, eight to 10 episodes, 16 to 22 episodes? By doing this, you aren't railroading. You're making sure the world is moving with your story. Things happen even if your players are on a shopping day. They may miss out on something, and even that lack of doing affects things down the road. When you design your adventure with a definite ending, it reminds your players that there is a story to keep pace with and reminds you, the GM, to pay attention to the story threads that will lead up to the final story climax. I suggest you tell your players how many sessions to expect so they have dates to look forward to and can schedule things like holidays around games or give you a definite in or out on each date. Oh, wouldn't that be fun to know when your players will be able to make it? Even if you think your players will be able to play longer, breaking down their adventure to shorter story arcs helps you best create the buildup and reward your players with a sense of accomplishment for their days of attendance and story buy-in. By knowing how long your session will be, you can be more purposeful with your off-the-cuff ideas. Pluck from session two and reintroduce in session seven. Reward isn't always in items or gold, although my players would be super upset if I skimped on those. Sometimes reward can be confirmation of a theory they have, realization that items they've acquired are a piece or solution to a bigger puzzle. It could even be the acknowledgement to the NPCs that their participation in an event or political force made a massive effect on the world or revealed something that could help someone along the way. Rewards can be as abstract as closure and revelations. This isn't limited to RPGs. This is important in novels and video games. Everything in Idle Champions builds towards some kind of reward for players. Whether it's collecting gems from boss kills to purchase chests and familiars, unlocking more champions, or earning more blessings. And sometimes it's not easy to figure this stuff out. Check out plot templates on worldanvil.com to help you craft a satisfying climax and tie up loose ends. You know, let's discuss all this with our special guests and begin our quest here on the Storyteller's Guide after these short videos. Hi, I'm Benwin Bronzebottom, celebrity dwarf and video game enthusiast, and this is my sidekick, Crowy. Hello. We're here to tell you about Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms, a Dungeons & Dragons-based strategy management game from Codename Entertainment. They're Canadian, so you know it's good. Let's talk about the game. Did you ever play Cookie Clicker? Of course not. This game is a management game like that, but with far more emphasis on strategy. And with a flavoring of D&D's lore and legendary heroes, you can unlock your favorite champions like Farida from Aaron M. Evans' Brimstone Angels Saga, Minsk and Boo from Baldur's Gate, and the fourth and final member of Acquisitions Incorporated the C-Team, Amy Falcone's Walnut Dongras. The K is silent. Create the best adventuring party possible based on the formation options, your character's ability, and the obstacles and enemies you face. Or you just randomly click on things like I do and hope for the best. You can click on enemies to assist your champions, or you can set them up and walk away and let them do their thing. It's entirely up to you. I'm playing on the toilet right now. Why wouldn't you be? Idle Champions is available on all your favorite gaming platforms, including tablets, for the low, low price of free. So download it now. End with joke. You're not supposed to read it that. It says end with joke. No, we're supposed to come up with a joke to go with oh. where it says end with joke. I don't know. End with joke is pretty funny. Wait, on three. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. End, end with, with joke. joke. <laughs> I think it's funny. It's very funny. One of the biggest problems that storytellers face while in session is that when you're searching through your notes and books, you're breaking the flow of the game. 
World Anvil allows you to manage your lore, the stat blocks of your PCs, NPCs and monsters, your music, handouts, and so much more from a single screen. Fill your maps with lore and bring your worlds to life by connecting locations, NPCs, races, and monsters to the lands of your world with interactive maps. Track the history of your world, the adventures of your party, and all your major NPCs with timelines. World Anvil is not just for D&D 5e, it supports any other game you want, since you can build stat blocks in any system you're running and play your campaign in it, as every proper homebrew tool should aim to do. Oh, and you can make your own system too. Create an account now at worldanvil.com and join the World Builders Guild. Use the code STORYTELLER for a whopping up to 30% off Master and Grandmaster memberships. That's worldanvil.com. Hi guys, and welcome back to the Storyteller's Guide. I am Satine Phoenix, show a story guide, and today we have an amazing episode. We are going to talk with my dear friends, Matt Altman and Kirk Thatcher. Matt Altman is a WGA writer who focuses on female-driven action thrillers, and Kirk Thatcher is the co-creator, director, the showrunner of The Curious Creations of Christine McConnell, there's a lot of C's in that, <laughs> and the co-creator and the designer of The Dinosaurs! He's been a fest for a long time. Yes. I did not know that. I don't tell people what I do. It's so good. It's such a weird, <laughs> it's such a weird <laughs> career. It goes all over the place. Um, yeah, I'm just turning just my funny. fangirl off in yes, three, Yes, I will be professional. Me too. Professional. This is my professional pose. <laughs> Dear I'm friends. I'm not buying it. <laughs> I'm so happy oh. to be here with you guys. So happy to be here too. I'm so happy to pull some stories out of your heads and then put it in a bucket and then swirl it around. Good luck with that. Apologize. <laughs> Apologize in advance. Yeah. Um, you I know there. you. Yeah, well, <laughs> I know you guys so well, but I want to share you with my friends in the audience. Why don't you guys share what your favorite aspects about building characters in your stories are? Hmm. Uh, I love character building. That's that's one of the things that get me into a story is is creating my, my characters. Uh, usually I start with a character, something that's really uh, interesting to me or intrigues me. Uh, maybe I start with a plot situation like, you know, someone someone's uh, child is kidnapped or, or someone has a uh, has something go, go wrong with their marriage that turns out to be really some dark underlying alien invasion or something going on. So uh, the important thing though is how the character reacts. Uh, there's always, I think when I start with character, it's what they want and what they need, uh, which is usually two different things, uh, want and need, uh, which is always warring within a character. And you have to sort of figure out uh, as you go through how to deliver that in each scene and each and, and make it uh, make it work with everyone else and life yeah. like that's pretty much yeah. the cure for life yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> that's maybe why I like storytelling so much yeah. is it's you sort of figure out life and figure out character <laughs> if, it all went, if it all went according to plan <laughs> right <laughs> As long as I designed it, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> Firework King there are aliens and superheroes it's awesome <laughs> I always start with a premise that makes me laugh. I mean, I tend to write comedy, and even when I watch dramas, I'm like, you know what would be funny? Um, so in some ways, for me, I start with a premise, and then for the conflict, who would be the worst people to be involved in that situation? And, and not necessarily worse like they all kill each other, but worse than like, you know, you put a, a claustrophobic in, in a in collapsed mind tunnel, right. or, and, and then, then you put him with a really annoying person who's very needy. Yeah. You know, who wants the tension all the time. Mm -hmm. And so you go, oh my God, it's like the odd couple. When, and working with the Muppets a lot, you, you have these very extreme characters. And, and what Matt was saying is like what they want and, and what they, what was it? What they want mm -hmm. and what they need um, are two different things. So their obsessions, again, with comedy and, and drama too, to some degree. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's the same thing. It's just the flip side. Yeah. You're just going for laughs and, and, and the drama side, we're, we're trying to bring out the, the emotional. The emotional, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I think, yeah, for me, it's it's finding the conflict 
and for again, what makes me laugh could also be drama. I mean, I tend to laugh at a lot of things. It's my it's my stress <laughs> relief. Is like, oh my god, he's gonna kill so him. Awkward. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. I, I'll go to horror so. movies and I'll laugh because especially if it's obvious. So, I think I start like that, and then I try to. The other really fun thing for me with characters is the relationships. And kind of what I'm saying, how they poke each other, yeah. or you know, prod each other, or or even help each other, but in a way that they don't necessarily like. I think that's where it always gets layered and, and, and more subtle in a way in that this person is exactly the wrong person for them to be stuck with, but in some ways that their journey together, they, right. they learn, you know, they each learn how to either shut up or how to relax or whatever it is. So yeah, it's actually the perfect person for them to get that yeah. point yeah. That, they, it's, that they don't realize is what they actually need. It's like creating a perfect cocktail party. Yeah. You know, you're going to invite like eight of your friends and they're all creative and fun. And you're like, oh, we're going to get along really great. Not by that. You don't want conflict typically. Yeah. Right. yeah you don't invite diehard die oh, Republicans with you. Or do you? <laughs> well, yeah, I don't. Be I mean, it's <laughs> the more uncomfortable it is, the more right for the characters, the more the, it's fun they're going to break out. Yeah. It's fun for us to watch, but yeah. it's also they're going to break out of their stasis. They're they're every day this is what i do all the time now right. suddenly something comfort zone yeah some something's come in and screwed that up so now they're like oh now i gotta figure out a new way of dealing with things so i think actually well, yeah comfort perfect. zone putting characters out of their comfort yeah. zone yeah is again if a guy's like a, a battle guy and he has right. to talk someone out of something right. as opposed to cutting his head off because that won't work you know yeah. if it's a hydra or something that just keeps regenerating he has to think differently i think that's where people for me at least you enjoy I don't know if it's character growth, uh, but you, you see them. I think we like to see yeah. people conquer problems, right? Because it makes us feel better about our lives. Absolutely, like things are conquerable. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you guys are the perfect two people to be on this specific episode. Sweet. It's like I crafted it that way. Wow. <laughs> so weird. So weird. It's like you took two characters you knew and you said, "What would be?" <laughs> so, are you ready to create this adventure? Sure. So ready. All right, so the prompts are, now you're a dungeon master. Yeah. You are not a dungeon master. You have played d and I've seen it with my yeah, eyes. I've played it with you, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, so this will be really interesting. <laughs> okay. Prompt is the climax. <laughs> is the climax of the adventure. Right. Not oh, too oh, oh um, darn and it. I thought this was going to get interesting. <laughs> yeah. And um, rewarding characters for their hard work. Okay. So that is going to be the focus of what we are building today. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is you build, make sure that it builds up to that big crescendo okay. and how to reward the characters for their hard work. Imagine uh, six level five characters mm -hmm. for you that would be um, experienced, slightly right. experienced yeah. characters. Journeyman, yeah, yeah. Journeyman, yes. And a four hour game or okay. A long ass movie. <laughs> Peter Jackson movie. <laughs> or Quentin yes. Tarantino movie recently. Okay. Yeah. Ready. <laughs> Set. Go. All right. So, we have the characters. Uh, they're the players. We right, don't, yeah, we don't know figure, yeah. who they are, but right. they're fifth level characters. Hopefully, we play with them for a while. Maybe not. Uh, we want to create something that'll. that'll make it interesting for them and apparently we want a huge climax at the end. That's right. <laughs> uh, so I think we start with how do we get them together? Uh, maybe they've, I personally like when, when playing D&D &D uh, and running uh, campaigns, I like having them already know each other in some ways. Yeah, me too. It saves so uh, much time. Save, <laughs> saves so much time. You don't have the, the standard in, in where they all meet in the tavern, which gets a little lame. <laughs> I mean, everyone does it, which it's fine. I get it. But sometimes you want a little something different. That was level one anyway. Yeah, level one. Yeah. Uh, fifth level. The cool thing about it that I like to do is have like one have a connection with someone else, and then some one one of the other characters have a, a connection with the group maybe. Right. But not all of them, you know, knowing each other uh, well. Right. Uh, you know, if we're talking fifth level characters at this point, they've probably been adventuring for a while. But they're still like someone who's their best friend. In the okay. group and someone who's who's not so we can lead right we can lead this so yeah. these are um it may say it's a one shot right but building the building it so that they've already the characters know each right. other right we can choose who is linked to whom right exactly. and who's linked to what other things but it's still giving them the freedom of choice yeah right and yeah. then uh i think sometimes calling on their backstory is fun to bring them into an adventure maybe uh you know they're Long lost sister has called them. She's getting married, or maybe she's uh, she's her child is missing. <laughs> she needs help, or or maybe something uh, 
you know, where your your family is dysfunctional and they won't they want you to come in and now it becomes a whole thing where you're dealing with with this one character's dysfunctional family and it turns out they're all like killers or something <laughs> which could be really interesting <laughs> I, I also like to bring in something where one member of the group is from a clan or something that right. has actually been the bad guys in previous ah. battles or something it's like of a it's yeah. like war fun on trek where he was like typically the enemy and now right. he's part of the crew yeah. and so there's a lot of bad blood it's mistrust. And there's mistrust and yeah of course the first thing that goes wrong everyone blames him or yeah. thinks he, he or she is guilty and i think that always creates an interesting group dynamic and they do it a lot in, in uh, i like that so yeah. i mean going with that you could have uh say any outsider character like a barbarian or a uh, right. or, or a rogue or someone they they have a family connection that calls on them and brings them in uh needs them for some reason let's say uh just randomly it's it's uh a, a death in the family to make it you know and they have to come in for the funeral it's like their grandmother they honor oh, yeah. and then the rest of the the party is to support them you know one of them is their best friend is like all right we'll go we have to go come on yeah. <laughs> and they're like but they're not people we trust these are like right. a barbarian tribe right or these people we fight orcs yeah maybe he's a half orc and this is right. Oh, yeah. right so uh so they all end up hopefully going <laughs> on this mission okay so bigger picture yes what is the whole thing about oh jeez I think uh, that's so usually what you have to, yeah that's yeah. usually what you have to figure out first really is, is what's what is the story uh, I I personally think uh, you know just grabbing an item or something is, is fun but it's it's something you do early on and, and everyone's done it I think if you want to do something interesting uh, you make it where the the characters are invested in it so they meet some character that they they start to care about and maybe that character goes missing and they ah. have to find that character so what is it all about maybe that character is about to be sacrificed to this demonic entity that's going to be brought in <laughs> and uh they have to stop that or else all hell will break loose now is that yeah. the climax or is the saving them the catalyst for something else that happens that they that's built right. up uh, well, That's I'm just riffing off your yep, funeral please. idea. Like, if they're all on the way to this funeral, but there's two warring tribes essentially going there, and it's sort of like when rival gangs declare a peace, mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, we each lost people there. So, it's essentially, oh, and then yeah. there's a necromancer or something who's trying to bring the deceased back. So you've got all these elements coming up to the big crescendo is kind of a hell's a poppin' funeral. You, can, I don't know, even, just you can even go with that a little bit and play play with the warriors trope and have yeah. them blamed for something. Yeah, uh, like you you basically frame them for for everything and then both the, the tribes are. are yeah, the, like the funeral <laughs> itself. That's kind of I mean. like a wedding it's, where somebody comes right, in and is yeah. like, I object. Right, right. <laughs> that's what I mean, that's the the, <laughs> the big climax is this funeral where you've got people hating each other, people mourning, and then someone trying to bring the dead back to life. I mean, that's a pretty good yeah. stew. I always talk about what's the stew? What are the elements yeah. in the stew, yeah. stew or the soup that's gonna make it like, oh crap, I just wanna see this movie or play this game because how the hell is it gonna end? It just sounds yeah. like a cluster foo of epic proportions. So, I mean, yeah, to me- Yeah, I mean, a lot of it can take place in the funeral. There's oh a lot yeah, of social I mean, the, interactions, yeah, a, lot a lot of exploration, of social, yeah. and expectations. Like some, you know, one of the tribe. I, I don't and know. And there could be conflict too if you mess with the wrong guy or or, yeah. or, or you what? blame the other people yeah. on the other side of the casket yeah. or whatever it is. It's going, you. It's because of you, you know, yeah. mother fluffers that yeah. we're we're here because you caused their death. And like, no, this was you know. And then there's a third party. I don't know. Like a I, reservoir dogs all in one yeah, location yeah. type. Yeah, of thing. exactly. We're That's kind of sexy. And there's a journey to it where yeah. you, you find out about each other and then at the end right. is this epic event. I mean, funerals and weddings, like you said, are these huge emotional big, events. Big emotional event, yeah. And adding in a necromancer just makes it fun for me. It's like, <laughs> and this yeah. guy's trying to, in other words, he thinks the way to broker the peace is to bring the dead back to life. And it, it definitely fits in with like the yeah. funeral and all, the, right. all that. So it's, and then also it's sort of ties does in he succeed? thematically. I love it. Okay, so. Uh, okay, we're, we're done. Thank you. Yeah, no, yeah. we're going to come back to yeah. the adventure. What I want to build out actually is the location because right. the okay. location itself can be a character. Right. Sure. Right. So you've got 
the um, ante room where you walk in. Right, and right. A lot of things happen there. There's the greeting of right. people, who's greeting whom, right. who's waiting. And then you have this seating area with the, with the viewing seating area. Right. But then there's other rooms, you know? There's the, the, the snack room. There's like the kitchen, <laughs> right? Because everybody has to mingle. Like, Sure. I imagine a wake in here for some but, reason. But you're imagining it like in a like, what house. If, what if it's no, no, a, like, like a temple building. Right? I'm wondering what if it's out like in you know the frozen wastelands. Like it's oh, yeah, who it's knows? Barbarian. Yeah, if it's a barbarian okay. thing. It's your it's, story. Yeah, so no, can, but I'm just thinking outside, like I don't inside. think it's a you know a funeral home with organ music playing. I think it's like <laughs> I was just thinking like where's the worst Which, place? There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> no, and that's you know typically for our civilization that's a problem. If I did that, I would I would throw in some haunted some ghosts and yeah. But I like the idea of a wake though because. Pe traditionally, half the you know the, the people who are people who celebrate wakes get drunk yeah. and yeah. prop up the dead and sing to it and talk with it, take their picture with Tell it. Stories. The other ones are completely As mortified. You, <laughs> you know, like right. there's no respect for the dead. You're singing, you're making jokes about them. Yeah. So right there, I think you the have the best a good... conflict actually is you have one group that's basically barbarians and one that's like this civilized, right. noble, right? Like, exactly. And they're and they're just a complete clash. The barbarians are like. Throwing this wake, and the nobles are like, "What?" Maybe they were a couple. Maybe it's a barbarian married this noble woman, yeah. oh, or vice versa. A noble woman, yeah, married a barbarian because he was sexy and you know, and made yeah. decisions. And it was Conan basically? Yeah, she married Conan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but some princess married Conan, and maybe yeah. it was a you know, some of the family wanted it. He rescued her from the dragon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. That classic. And so the families are getting together and being like, "We hate these guys. Like, we, you guys are pansies. You guys are, you know." Yeah, and maybe, that's like, fun. How do you decide which ceremony to run? Right. Well, you know, again, the, the, some people burn their uh, yeah. burn their dead. Other people, you know, freeze them in glass coffins. It's like an argument over what to do over the bodies, and right. and, and there was no will because they didn't weren't planning on being killed. Exactly. I mean, adventures. And then, and then yeah. we frame our adventures exactly. for his death, and we you know, we make we make the. Uh, the, both clans unite in trying to kill you, <laughs> which gets them together, in the end, right. which is nice. Have, and then, uh, have, and uh, then we uh, bring in this necromancer, right. who, brings, brings, who was actually the one behind it all. Now, did, maybe the kid of the of the the couple. Oh. He went. He was. Oh, he was never. Away. No, he was. <laughs> he was well, no. He think about it. He was. He, he has this barbarian badass. Right. Player, and he becomes a necromancer because right. he's like can never live up to right. this guy. <laughs> he's he's, he's, he's uh, he, was, he was the nerd. Yeah. <laughs> and then his dad was like, just like pick yeah. up a sword. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with you? And he was like, Marilyn Man, Marilyn. I'm gonna bring this this gerbil back to life. My, right. my first pet that died. <laughs> weird, like I like that. Animals. He's like Marilyn Manson. He's yeah. just like I'm rebelling against your entire He's civilization. And he, in the end, it went a little dark. And maybe he went too far. Yeah. Maybe he was trying to mess with things. And he killed his dad accidentally. And now he wants to bring him back and yeah. bring everything back to normal. Aww. He misses him. <laughs> he feels okay. bad. He's feels trying bad. to, you know, yeah. that classic father wound. But he also yeah. doesn't want to be like blamed for this, so he's blaming <laughs> you guys. <laughs> He staged Ooh. it to look yeah. like yeah, like yeah. We, like one of you characters. Oh, interesting. Okay. okay. All right. Let me wrangle this in a little. bit. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. They're so, all right. over the place. No, no, I <laughs> like it. I'm totally. I can handle it. So, we start loose. I think every we artistic endeavor. You start we're, super we're sketchy, guy, and then yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. We so, can do anything. <laughs> so that's not bad. Start loose. Yeah, yeah blue sky means you can basically come you ideas from anywhere. Yeah, right? idea Just vomit all over each other, and then we vomited. See what works. So, the location. Yes. What is this location? Uh, is it outdoor or indoor? I like this outdoor idea yeah. in the in this frozen steppies. Okay. Yeah. Uh, There's so probably some kind of lean to like or something. With like a little kiosk. Yeah. 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 There's maybe some, there's a cave. Like there's a cave, there's a cave where, cave where they... a cave temple, maybe? Right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. the... Uh, that's sort of <laughs> the snacks. I believe there's a snack room. <laughs> the snacks. Right. And then the the uh, nobles come in. They bring in these tents and this right. like large, you know, yurty. yurty yeah, style set of bonfires yeah. to be flowers. And, and all the barbarians are just outside in their skins. Yeah, chilling, just, just chilling like, in the like, snow. Yeah, huddling next to their yaks on yeah. the little little cooking fires. Okay, so now we're going to. I mean, you start wherever you want. Sure. But what does this look like? What does this outline actually look like? Oh, you mean from beginning to end, like? Yeah. yeah All right. Yeah. I think well, first we have the uh, adventurers uh, get this invitation, right? This uh, to this funeral that they, one of the right. members is related to and it has to go to, uh, and it sort of brings everyone into it, uh, and it's you know, I think as the game master, you sort of have to bring home that this is a serious loss. Bring bring a character who brings the message in, who's maybe a relative as well, and and no long lost. 
uh, like a little sister that was that was really close to to the character or a little brother or whatever, and looked up to them and and was just like you know devastated by this loss and uh, and have them sort of convince the characters to go with them. On this, on this and I think that's a journey. They don't just start. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think, think they have to go through Treacherous Mountain Pass with ice trolls. And yeah. Just, okay, you know. that's yeah, some, yeah, some nice encounters on the way. So yeah, a nice troll. We talked fun. about like <laughs> different factions going. So maybe right. they were like uh, two barbarians, three, four nobles, or whatever right. the, sure. the number is. Uh, they have to catch a ride together up. Right. right. Because no matter who they are, they still have to get up this treacherous pass. Right. 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 So um, that's where you can get these other factions start working together and trusting each other. Right. We'll roll. I love trolls. We yes. just yeah, make I it trolls. Trolls. Sure. Yeah. Uh, trolls to go up, and this is like a very ceremonious place. Right. Yes. When you say trolls to go up, you mean to guide them, or oh no, um, th uh, when they're going up, they attack. attack. Oh, let's have yeah. ice trolls yeah. and trolls. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, what's fun is if they have a guide, who's. No, it was a troll. Like in other words, it's kind of like having a Sherpa, yeah. but he's a troll. But he kind of thinks trolls are a hole. So he's he's, he's like also, or he's just doing it for the money. So maybe yeah. he's not even trusted. It's like you know, give me enough gold and I'll I'll take you on the safe route. Or some some like race like a full orc or something something yeah. that you wouldn't expect to be. Oh man, okay, just saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm Whoa. Check this out. Whoa. Did you know how like okay? So you introduce this casual troll. Right. Yes. Casual troll. Cash troll. Casual Cash troll. Cash troll. He's in a, up the in a suit, a little jacket. <laughs> oh, pipe. Just yeah. <laughs> take you, I will. He talks like Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> so you go up, you do, all this stuff happens. Like, we got to reintroduce this troll after they're upset. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That, well, was that was it. That was, well, that was no, a little excitement. He becomes a recurring character in this, <laughs> well, in this adventure. Maybe, so like, maybe he actually saves the entire funeral thing from being attacked by troll. You know, it's like, <laughs> well, they're all sitting there. Dude's ex-mock, you know. But, but no. he definitely... He yeah. definitely yeah. But I'm saying he's he has back. Yeah, he'll definitely come back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so well, yeah. you make your way up. You yeah. get there. Now we have to, like... Trials and tribulations. Trials and get tribulations. There. Now we lay out the actual playing field. Right. right. The real playing field is the... Uh, emotional duress between the tribes, you've right. got the social interactions between right. parents and, and the warring factions. What does this exactly look like? Or, uh, or yeah. uh, because it is a choose-your-own-adventure type of, of thing, right. um, the players only have a certain amount of time to explore right. socially and kind sure. of like look around the environment for information. I, I like using as little guide rails as possible, though, yeah. so I let them do whatever they want to do. Uh, if they want to talk to certain people, they can talk to whoever they want. I try to have as many uh, ideas of who who's around that, right. that I can, uh, so that they can interact. Yeah, let's build that. And what's funny uh, if there's clergy from the two different. In other words, it's like a, yeah, a, a want... mixed religion wedding where there's a rabbi and a priest. Like yeah. so, there's a barbarian. Necrom. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, and then some noble born, you know, yeah. kind of like Mawedge, that guy, you know, is like <laughs> kind of fussy, and and I think. And also the cultural differences of what they're right. supposed to do. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah, some I think of them, there should be a lot of conflict between there's the sacrifices. Sides. Like the barbarians sacrifice. And something. I think it starts off sort of just we don't want we don't want to burn the body. We right. want, we, right. want we, we want to bury the body. Right. And, and just like just the sort of uh, tension between the two sides. But I think it slowly builds. Uh, and you, that is cool. So yeah. that could be the actual conflict where whoever gets the final say of what is the ceremony is how part gonna, yeah. of the negotiation and part of the exploration. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. So whoever the people decide, like whoever the players decide to side with, yeah. right. they're going to try to manipulate and move and discuss. Right. But there's also, that's, I like that. again, I was thinking of conflict. There's also the barbarian's tradition is to sacrifice someone or something that's very close to the deceased to journey with them to the afterlife. Sure. So, Maybe that nasty and right. necromancer boy. <laughs> so I was saying, like, so that's like, his really, son. He's like, wait, 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 wait. Maybe that's or one maybe, of the reasons he wants to bring him back. Right. He's like, he's like I don't really don't want to be sacrificed. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, the Egyptians did that, and the, the entire you household was like... Stuff like um, yeah. But I think that's fun, and, and having the group And I think if that is involved, the case, you should definitely introduce it later. Like, yeah. yeah. Nobody yeah. realized no. that. No, until they're time. there. Yeah. I think it's Not good. even until, like, a while into it. 
And then it's like, oh, now we have the ritual of fast sacrifice. And it was like, what? <laughs> what? what? I want to make this as a live action movie with like death at a funeral, <laughs> but you know, because uh, that's the way my brain works. Yeah, no, but totally. uh, I just think, yeah, it is funny, like third away through two thirds of the way in. It's like, okay, so who are we going to sacrifice? When so there's the son, and there's his favorite you know, yak, you know, there's yeah. the nice, wife. nice girl who collected you guys who you yeah. like. And there's the niece. There's you. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and that's an interesting thing. And how they solve that is it by, right. do they battle for it? Do they buy? Do they buy their lives back? I don't know. And you could have, you could have like the champions have to fight each other for right. the for the honor of <laughs> the going. honor of going with. That's great. That's I love that when yeah. it plays against our archetypes. Yeah. Like I want to go. No, I want to go. Okay, so two barbarians, like his best friends, yeah, have to like, fight each other. It's my honor. It's my, no, it's honor, my to honor to escort him to the you know the uh, to, to Valhalla essentially. But then you have to have a cost. So what is the yeah, cost? Yeah, yeah, if yeah. that person leaves, then that person's wife, who is whatever, then yeah. right. they're left to take care of their twelve kids. Right, right, right. You know, so run the yak milking. This, so there's a lot going on here. This well, you is said you wanted a big climb. No, this is good. So <laughs> yeah. all of these, we'll say that there are four major ideas they need to uh, okay. overcome right. before the big thing happens. So right. um, this way, they're, every time they talk with somebody new, they learn uh, a piece of each four puzzle. Right. right. So okay. that way we're building. Right. We're building conflict. We're building story. Sure. They're exploring and they're revealing this history of these people together. Right. This yeah, is yeah. awesome. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and I think that's the best way of like finding out about uh, you know different different areas in, in your in your world is is interacting with the other characters and finding out sure. their history, their personal history, and connections with what's going on. Okay. So we've so. got how uh, we have one item that branches into two different things. So we have who, what ceremony is going to take place. Right. And they have to help figure out which ceremony is going and to then, take place. Consequently, and then, who would preside over it? Yeah. Which priest or... Right. Clerk, yeah. Exactly. Mm. And then Who's if, the winner of that? Right. <laughs> of that yeah. So concept. if it's the barbarian, which right. as a game master, kind of yeah. want to Right. Make that tasty because that yeah. consequence is fine. And I think you should make the barbarians as attractive as possible to players. So maybe they they yeah. really want to side with them. They're the honorable, cool, right. and, and then they're also the ones who want to do the sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. and then the, the other ones. I mean, it's really easy to make nobles. Yeah, it's basically, right. you don't want to hang out with, yes. with the Roman This is clients. a five-hour monologue. <laughs> yeah. from and, this and they're just priest. just like looking down their noses at the characters right. and everyone else and just yeah. just rude and you're like it's a boring ceremony yeah oh yeah whereas the other one is very short very, and exciting <laughs> exactly. yeah there's a thrill yeah. Yeah. okay so that is one <laughs> now you've got um so that is a ceremony religious right and then you've got political right. factions right so what is the political faction um idea that we can start I think we exploring. have the ne necromancer kid let's say right. it's the kid of the of the guy who's da dead and he wants to basically bring his dad back so that either he survives or, right. or or he he if he brings him back he'll be in control of him and then he's basically in charge but he right. won't he won't be in charge otherwise maybe just this might be a little guy yeah uh, and I think the the other side oh so the the other people want him to to bring the father back right because they're like oh this guy's a loser right right maybe there was a true like this father it was a kind of a noble barbarian who brokered a truce and him dying suddenly makes a power vacuum yeah so there's there's he's this super i mean he's basically Conan. He's Conan, who, yeah. who conquered this whole area right and he's the king, king Conan, Khan, yeah. and and, uh, and now he's he's dead and there's this huge vacuum where what? everything can end it could cause Chaos, yeah, chaos yeah. throughout this entire land particularly with the barbarians within themselves and then the barbarians and the noble whatever right. we're saying our noble people are because there was some sort of uneasy truce so right. you have like the, the necromancer character just be this like nice boy who just yeah. says random weird things yeah. and you're yeah. just like mm. he's awkward awkward <laughs> and then he says like you know like the uh, I'll bring your house down stapler type thing <laughs> and then you know you have the other people are like oh yeah he'll be the leader if this, he doesn't yeah. bring his father back. Right, and the barbarians don't trust him. Yeah, exactly. maybe like, that's a terrible like, idea. That's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would create even more of a power vacuum because his mother 
you know, wants him to not be killed and wants to see him lead, even though he's, uh, you know, it's the Prin- Prince Herbert kind of thing. It's like, <laughs> he's not, he's, he'll grow into it. He'll grow, you know, grow into it. He's a clever yeah, boy. Mom, yeah. mom totally supports him. She's yeah. like, he's smart. He's exactly. really smart. Kid. And the rest of the novel. <laughs> Look, he brought, the, the, he brought his squirrel back to life. It's a little pet squirrel. <laughs> a little army of squirrels. A little army of rabbit, zombie but... squirrels, yeah. <laughs> little... And a yak. Just a rotting I mean, there's yak. zombie ones. They, true. <laughs> In the background. It's the ride yeah. zombie yaks that he provides up the mom pass. Oh, God. That's good. It's very Monty Python. Where did these come from? I yes. found them. <laughs> <laughs> I made them. They smell even worse than regular yaks. So those are two hats. Okay, Let, right. um, I said four. Let's yeah. come up with a third one. And if whoever wants to run this game, they can come up with a fourth. Sure. Interesting. Uh, I think the third one is the uh, idea that the, our players are blamed somehow for this murder. And they're, well, that's uh, interesting. And they're framed for it. And that's that sort of unites all the the noble right. and, the, and the barbarian faction are trying to get them. Like well, and also it's a useful scapegoat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, in yeah. other words, if, this, if let's say the necromancer's son engineered it, right. so he doesn't get blamed, and everyone's sort of for that because suddenly there's a third party right. that really has no relation to it. So even those who suspect he might have done right. it, <laughs> and they're like, oh no, it's definitely these guys. Like, well, it's funny, it's like, happening yeah. well, you arrive at the at the funeral and everyone's looking at you like, you killed them. They're like, wait, what? No, wait, wait. I mean, I think that's... I wasn't yeah. even here. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't even here. Yes, but we know that, you know, we've heard the stories or something. That's fun. We've heard the stories of what you can do. <laughs> what you've done you and why. And, and there's <laughs> some circuitous route as to how... It it makes sense. That one could that, turn invisible. Oh. He definitely right. could have killed us. So, so they, the third thing is they're, you're blamed. Your group is blamed. Okay, right. but how soon after you get there are... That would be a while into it. Yeah, yeah. so I would say suddenly... At least that I remember getting the last... At least... It was a movie. Yeah. It's been the last half hour. Where yeah. suddenly that's the worst thing that could happen. Yeah. It's either like the, these people the are second awfully, half of the second act... They're the, awfully uh, integrated and are interested in what we're doing. Right. Yeah. Oh, and then he's trying to spread that. Okay, so what is the benefit of him telling everybody that they did it? That, like, did he actually kill his father? That would be yes, he killed his father. Yeah. Why? I think I, I think it could be two reasons. Uh, it could either be accidental I if you want to make him a, a little more likable, or, a, a yeah. likable or, redeemable, or redeemable yeah. character. Or, you know, he was experimenting with magic and it just went wrong. Well, and that's he drained his father's life. <laughs> yeah. And now he wants to bring it back. He wanted to be powerful like his father, and instead yeah. he actually took the power yeah, he from wanted, his father. He wanted the strength of his father, right. so he took it, and then it was all <laughs> <of> his <father. laughs> oh, Yeah, he didn't know. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, makes sense. It makes him somewhat right. relatable and also, like, a little sympathetic. He's not... A okay. And the other one is, is the more traditional. He's a dark... Right. You know, Negri, he He's wants to be powerful, yeah. and he killed him because he wants this power. And then he realized that he couldn't take over himself because well, too like, much. I like it's villains who just, nobody will trust them. Villains are just flawed people yeah, just, trying to do like maybe a selfish yeah, means, but yeah, not. Yeah, I, I mean, want he, to take over the world. It, it might have been uh, if he's the, the the villain version. It might be that he actually still thinks that he would be a better ruler than his right. dad. His dad was a dumb barbarian. Right. Uh, and he's this genius who b- could bring the dead back to life. <laughs> so, oh, maybe. so he could totally fix things ju- if these people would just listen to him. But maybe right. he's the linchpin because he's a barbarian son, but his right. mother's... And so he was raised, like in the private school, he was raised with the noble people. <laughs> and so he's like, okay, my dad's a good, strong man. He's got morals, but he's kind of a barbarian. So right. I think... Because of I have barbarian blood, they trust me, and I have the noble. But he thinks he is the Kwisatz Haderach. You know, right. he will combine the two. Yeah. So it, it's not that he hates his dad; he just thinks, uh, and he wants his dad's. But right. I like that he wants his dad's power. Yeah, I think I think the less you, you do the mustache twirly yeah, evil, the, so the better. Uh, but you know, you could definitely go a darker route that he actually intended to go as well. Those are the two right. choices, really, cool. the two branches. So but I, the- what is that climax? So what is the... Of the whole game? Yeah. Like, uh, well, if you're, if you're doing the one two, one two version, the first two versions where it's... it's uh, then it's bringing the father back and she, right. and and it's it goes wrong. It and goes you have, wrong. And you have... Because uh, he's still not... He's, you know... Yeah. So, so, you, the fi- so the Avengers so, yeah. have to actually kill the zombie dad? Yeah, they kill the right. dad and... Uh, the, the and uh, <laughs> the barbarian, and they probably have to fight a right. portion of both sides. The barbarian, or, or also, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> when you said you wanted a big climax, and then the so and then the ice trolls good. show up. Yeah, yeah right. Oh. Yeah, and you bring, your, you bring your ice troll friend back. He's right. he's like he's like. So the ice trolls are planning to attack. <laughs> <laughs> right in the middle, yeah. This is bad timing. Uh, yeah. Come on. Okay, so that's one route. Right. What is the other route? Uh, the other route is you're basically facing. The kid and you're uh, and 
And his army of squirrels. And his <laughs> buzz. It, he, he's, uh, I mean, you could go really dark and have him poison the entire party <laughs> of, and, then, and then bring them all back. And right, like, and face, then he like, controls them all. Oh, yeah. that's or good, he, like the, all the important yeah. people. Right, right, right. Yeah. Mm. All the leaders. Yeah. I love that. He poisons them. So, and then brings them back, but now they're in his thrall. Yeah, yeah. so you have to fight oh, that. Maybe like a mind control, so something more instant. Right, because if you're gonna try to bring a lot well, of people as a necromancer, uh, that's why we were going that yeah. route. But if if you want, what, what you is can, that? Like, what what could you do as a bad guy if you're a necromancer? You bring back usually, the zombies that you control. That fast? Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, it's yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Oh, oh suddenly <laughs> fantasy has rules. Anime <laughs> dead. Sorry, I mean anime dead. Is, well, actually. Yeah, well, actually. <laughs> yeah, personally, yeah. a little slower, but you could also have him. They're not fully this. dead, they're mostly dead, so Being, it's quicker. He could have been starting a ritual that he's been doing this whole time. Right. And well, actually, you can put oh, clues You can put clues throughout. Oh, well, maybe yeah. he's got food that have, he's been giving them to give them strength and keep them warm, and it's actually been part of the ritual. Of the ritual. And you could have, uh, that's oh. one of the clues you could weave throughout that the characters could be like, what's going on? What? What Why is this? We keep, you know, we find, these, bread, we find, yeah. or we find these, these areas that are carved in these, these uh, right. uh, odd sites. Su- signs and sigils and stuff. Like, these um, sigils don't, aren't related to these the religion, two yeah. religions. Right. Which you right. can do religious checks, you can do all sorts of fun stuff. And maybe he writes them in their native yeah. tongue, so each character has to read it, because they can, yeah, you know, he, he knew, too. yeah. Oh my god, I love this so much. <laughs> okay. What I still love is he's trying to fix yeah. screw-ups with bigger screw ups. In yeah, other words, just like he's like, oh God, I mean, this is bad. I know what I'll do. I'll kill everybody and, and then, then bring it back. The last version, the, the, <laughs> the one where we had them uh, being blamed for, for it, then they have to right. basically fight, fight everybody. <laughs> so it's, it's just, they have to be, it, do a run for it and do the whole Warriors thing where they're, they're being right. chased at different Which gangs. And maybe, cool. and the Ice Troll could come in. Exactly. Yeah, he's, he's their, uh, One of the gangs. their ace in the hole. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So there's your choices. Okay. Big climaxes. Oh and my gosh. There's a satellite in space with a laser that can. No. And everybody's right. done. <laughs> that's, that's the final class. <laughs> number four. Okay, so. Yeah, that's um, number four. What are the. How do you reward your characters in this case? Uh, survival is always good. Life? <laughs> Life <laughs> is good. Uh, I think that they stopped a big war is good. Right. So they're gonna get experience. They get hero. <laughs> they get, they get hero medals from each. Uh, they tribe. might, mm-hmm. if they basically sided with one side, they'll probably get the you the know, medal or reward from that or, side, or, or a title of and, that, yeah. and some sort of uh, will do you a favor in the future they kind get, of thing. They get a hundred acres in the act. I mean, land. I mean the, yeah. the nobles so you can get give the, them, the nobles can give right, them a little yes, land. Zombie you know, <laughs> the, the uh, barbarians can give them a yak. <laughs> or give them really good swords. The barbarians yeah. go, we, oh, yeah. we gift we you have with this the... magical item right. that, yeah. Use, yeah. that has been with the tribe forever. You know? Right. And if everybody fights you, then the trolls... The trolls make you an ally. And you suddenly have a troll army at your disposal. Because and, or you, you get their... The troll treasure, the special troll oh, treasure. Yeah. The troll treasure. Because <laughs> there's treasure. always troll treasure. They always, they, always they kill people on the mountain pass yeah. and steal it. Look gold. what we found. You could have it. Yeah. Okay, so I have a couple questions. Yeah. I have no idea how much time has passed. I've had so much fun doing this with you guys. Because you're awesome. Um, is my beard white? <laughs> Your beard is fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. Okay. Fabulous. So, what are the names of these two factions? Uh, so the barbarians. I like uh, some sort of animal name, yeah. like uh, like the the uh, <laughs> warg warg uh, stompers. The, <laughs> sold warg stompers. Sounds like a yeah. band. Yeah. yeah, maybe a little too too bad. Like, uh, they the, all the carry, tig- They're all part bar. The red tiger. <laughs> red tiger. <laughs> tiger. How about ice tiger? Ice, ice tiger. Ice tiger. Ice tiger. Okay. Okay. Ice leopards. Ice, oh. ice leopards, ice tiger, something like that. Uh, is the ice leopard, ice tiger? Um, Three, two. Let's do ice tiger. Ice I tiger, like, like soul. That. Okay, the nobles. Different. And the, the nobles. Uh, I think that's like a race. Shouldn't be like, we, instead we of like. Make them part of a. Uh, like, uh, Absinthia. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. Absinthia. Like a country, yeah. Absinthia. Yeah, with Absinthians. Yes. Yeah, Cynthians, they sound pretty, uh, pretty Hoody uptight. To- Hoody to- Hoody to- <laughs> sure. And drunk. Yes. And <laughs> okay. they drink a lot, yes. <laughs> what is the name of the creepy son? Uh, oh. Nergel. <laughs> yes! Nergel. <laughs> what with is the G? name yeah. of the father, the dead father? The barbarian? Mm-hmm. 
Slorak. <laughs> Slorak's a barbarian. Um, last. Ah, uh, there's two questions. There's three questions. What is the name of the troll Sherpa? Troll uh, Sherpa. Uh, he's uh, Rimley. <laughs> <laughs> the troll, the troll show, right? <laughs> Rimley, Rimley the Warm. Yeah. <laughs> what is the name of the yak, the zombie yak? Oh. See, he's got to refer to it. You know, like sloth. But sloth's an animal. Yeah. But How about horse state of being? <laughs> it's true, but uh, yak sloth. This right. is my yak sloth. <laughs> sloth. How about there you go? Sloth. sloth. Okay. There you go. <laughs> we made it more. It's like a George more Lucas thing. It's, it's, it's a really slow character. I'll call him Slothar. <laughs> Slothar Thanks, the George. Undying. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Slothar the Undying. Or, yeah, there you go. And the last question. Are you ready dun, for dun, the last dun. question? What is the name of this adventure? Oh. Uh, er- Deaths at a funeral. <laughs> Death at a funeral. <laughs> no. Apparently, a death at a funeral. <laughs> a parent. A Lee. parent death. Ooh. A parent death. A, par- a parent death at a funeral. Uh, no. uh, heir apparent. Funeral. Uh, funeral. This is the, the hardest part, honestly. Yeah, I know. Yes. The, the name of this adventure. Hmm. How about four deaths and a funeral? <laughs> four. Four necromancers for a funeral. One, one, one necromancer in a funeral. One necromancer in a funeral. Are you giving it away? Mm, yeah. It is giving it away a little bit. Well, let's uh, see. Waking the dead. Um, waking that divine. Oh, it's been taken. This is uh, hard. I'm, like, yeah. yeah. This is, the, hands down, the hardest Awake in the snow. The names are tough. Uh, I like you're playing off wake. That uh, sounds like a Harlequin romance snow. novel. <laughs> it does. And yet I kind of like it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Awake in the snow with zombies. Okay, last one. What do we got? I feel like we have something here. <laughs> yeah. I really like. I think there's a cure. A parent. Okay. Yeah, a parent. I like yeah. the word apparent. Apparently or dead. Apparently. apparently dead. Apparently dead could be very simple and you know. Yeah. Apparently dead. Yeah. Why not that? Apparently Done. Dead. It is so. called apparently dead, and that is the end <laughs> of our storyteller's guide episode. Dun, 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 dun. We did it. Did you see how easy that was? <laughs> It was so simple. It was fun. Yeah, um, I enjoyed it. Uh, it was very rewarding for me. Thank you, gentlemen. Well. So glad. Yes. Um, please share with everyone in the audience either what you're working on or where they can find you on the internet. Uh, I am Matt Altman2 on Twitter and Matt Altman on Facebook. And I have a TV pilot that we're about to go out with as soon as my showrunner's ready in October that hopefully will sell. And uh, yeah. if if so, then you'll be seeing a show called Crazy Girl. Yay. Which I like. It's nice. very Buffy esque. Nice. Cool. Um, let's see. Uh, Kirk Thatcher or Kirk R. Thatcher on Facebook. Kirk no without the R, Kirk Thatcher on Instagram. Um, I've got a couple uh, shows I'm developing, one based on an animated short that someone did that I'm friends with. And then I'm going to do a Kickstarter uh, on the name Captain Randy Submarine. <laughs> what I say is if, if Benny Hill did Pee Wee's Playhouse and it was written by Monty Python and the Muppets. Oh my God. So it's a giant potpourri or cornucopia of, it's framed like a kid's show, but I say it's not dirty it's naughty it's fun take my money yeah <laughs> everyone who every crew so the exciting thing for me is it's really a clearinghouse or a uh, a um test bed for other people's stuff oh. because like a kid's show you go to cartoons and things so in the submarine you've got the periscope which is a tv screen and you can cut to like a variety show. yeah exactly oh, but it, cool. but at the wraparound is captain randy and his adventurers in this Magical submarine called the Rusty Fun Bucket. That sounds amazing. It's yeah. I, it, thank you, so everyone. I tell it to like I'm I mean, shocked how people react to it. Rusty so, Fun So I, I will ask yeah. all of you to tell your friends if you see it. It'll be on. Definitely. It'll either be Kickstarter or Indiegogo, um, and we're trying to raise enough to do a couple episodes and actually pay people. Um, but so the uh, the tiers, the stretch goals, and this is not for sure yet, but I'm trying to get Dave Fincher to direct. If we get a million dollars to do to do eight episodes, David That'd Fincher will direct the last one. Yes. So oh I'm gonna God. hit him up this next week, so I, fingers crossed. Wow, that Not is a guarantee. Amazing. But yeah, we have a lot of people interested. Uh, that's your like wish. Names. That is your... That's your my wish. wish. Well, he's a friend, and it really would be a day out of his life, yeah. But, you know. 
That's wow. awesome. So, yeah. Thanks. That was one hell of a storyteller's guide. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Satine Phoenix, at Satine Phoenix, mm -hmm. on all the things. You can catch me on a ton of things here on Gilding Light. And I want to give a huge thank you to Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms and World Anvil, our wonderful sponsors. And an extra, 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 extra thank you to our location. This is Yay. the Sherman at the Sherman in Sherman Yay. Oaks. It is a rad bar. They have they're a restaurant also. And um, I believe we're going to be doing some D D events here. Sweet. So yes, that is all. Dungeons and drinking? D and D and D. D and D and D. So Thank yeah. you, dear storytellers, for watching. Uh, we have one more episode left after this episode for season one. I hope you've learned a lot. I know I have. And I will see you guys next time. Yeah. Aloha. Aloha.